reply. Thanks for the reply. Hereby I will copy paste your letter piece by piece, in commas, and then will reply below the word unquote. Having an adequate understanding of both thermodynamics and evolution, I know that one possesses no challenge to the other. Unquote. When we twice mention evolution, we actually mean emergence of living beings in current form, starting from simple naturally available material on Earth, with slow transformation. So please do not try to tell me in any of your letter, that evolution and abiogenesis are two different things, for which I need to educate myself off. What we twice mean with that, is that the cell itself cannot arise and so cannot evolve into multicellular organism, which then undergo further evolution. The process cannot start thermodynamically, to form one single cell. As information theory states, that all the components of cell are information molecules, which cannot arise just with the supply of energy. There needs to be an intelligence, to put the information into the cell, to make it work, and to continue replicating itself. Information cannot arise by simple supply of energy. I am attaching a video, which describes the impossibility of spontaneous formation of proteins, DNA and RNA. What's more, I can prove it. I've had this discussion at least 1,000 times already, and I'm not interested in wasting any more time reading someone else's copy pasta. Speak for yourself. Let's see you do what no creationist has ever done. Explain how you imagine thermodynamics or entropy are supposed to pose any threat for evolution. Unquote. If you have done it earlier to others, then it must be even more easy for you to copy-paste what you wrote to others. Just review your sent letters to others. I want material for which you have your own explanation. If you attach someone else's material, please attach it as your own. Do not give reference so as to redirect me. The material I attach to you should be taken by you as my own, and I am stating those facts to you this is what you should suppose. So it is me who is asking you to read the book. Decoding the Universe The following video states that for the abiogenesis to happen the amount of energy needed, is equivalent to heating up of water in a bathtub spontaneously up to 360 degrees centigrade something that never happens. Please read the description of this video too. I know you won't meet this challenge. No one ever has. The most you can do is misrepresent and misdefine each of the terms involved in your argument. Because the only way to buy the argument you did is if you don't understand either one. Unquote. Okay, you can see me define a biogenesis and evolution as a continuum of processes, the later fully dependent on the former. And if a biogenesis did not happen, there is no basis for atheism. In fact, the information theory tells us that information cannot be created without intelligence and the process of living is to continue carrying the information in a localized form. Once information dissipates, then the process is called death. Chemically speaking, life is a state of non-equilibrium of all chemical processes, while death is when all reactions come in a state of equilibrium. So information and entropy are related in this way. Information needs to be localized, and tends to dissipate and heat also has the same property. So I suggest you look up second law of thermodynamics. Unquote. I hope I did explain the second law of thermodynamics and information theory in my own words. And evolution, which is essentially an explanation of biodiversity, summarized at descent with inherent genetic modification. Now explain in your own words where you imagine the problem lies. Unquote. As I wrote you earlier that I am talking about self-emergence of life into current form, whether through a biogenesis or evolution. So the problem lies in a scientific basis of atheism. If life cannot originate, how will it evolve? 
Again, please read the description of the video I am attaching. Peace. If it is hard to imagine polypeptides or polysaccharides in primordial waters, it is harder still to imagine polynucleotides. But so powerful has been the effect of Miller's experiment on the scientific imagination that to read some of the literature on the origin of life, including many elementary texts, you might think that it had been well demonstrated that nucleotides were probable constituents of a primordial soup and hence that pravidal nucleic acid replication was a plausible speculation based on the results of experiments. There have indeed been many interesting and detailed experiments in this area. But the importance of this work lies, not in demonstrating how nucleotides could have formed on the primitive earth, but in precisely the opposite. These experiments was to see, in much greater detail, than would otherwise have been possible, just why pre-vital nucleic acids are highly implausible. <laughs>